Are you a newbie or a professional? You may be surprised to see where you land. Keep watching to see what separates the amateurs from the seasoned pros so that even if you're just starting out, you will know how to head in the direction of success. And stay to the end for the best way to stay rooted in your power when too many voices are telling you what to do. So when it comes to a newbie versus a professional business owner, here's the thing. Newbies market to everyone and professionals market to only their ideal clients. Now, I probably was a newbie for a long time, so I definitely want, don't want this to trigger you. Maybe you've been in business for a while and you're like, am I a newbie? Because I'm still marketing to everyone. It's okay, that's not what I'm trying to say. But I do want you to discern you know, where you are in terms of how you market, how you sell, how you run your business, and look at where you wanna go. And so that's why we're saying newbies versus professionals. But again, it's not about judging yourself. It's really looking at where am I on that continuum and where do I wanna go? In the beginning, we all market to everyone, right? Because you're testing. You're not really sure who your exact ideal client is. I've only met a handful of brand new business owners who work super crystal clear on exactly who their ideal client is and were with that same ideal client years later. The truth is we evolve. Our businesses evolve our target clients evolve, right? Because you probably change your packages, you change your products, things shift, things, you know, you learn things along the way. So if you feel like you're marketing to everyone, I really recommend you take a moment to stop and just ask yourself, if I didn't have to market to everyone, who would I most like to work with? Like who is my dream client? And an easy way to think about that is to, you know, think about all the clients you've ever worked with. Who is your favorite client? And what do you love about them? Is it because they see you as the expert? Are they highly coachable? Are they easy to work with? Maybe they're fun, right? Maybe they refer a lot of people to you. Maybe they pay you on time. All the things, right? All the things that make them great. Your job as a business owner, as you move into that realm of being a seasoned business owner is to get super crystal clear on exactly who that ideal client is. Because once you know who that exact ideal client is, then you don't have to market to everyone. You can just market to that specific person. And that makes it easier to write your blogs. It makes it easier to make a video. It makes it easier to write a book, right? It makes it easier to have your website set up. It makes everything easier. And guess what? It also makes it super easy for your clients to find you. Let me know in the comments below if you've had trouble figuring out who your ideal client is. Second, when it comes to newbies versus professionals, newbies tend to work all the time and professionals tend to delegate all the time. Again, in the beginning, we all do this. We wear every single hat in the company, a lot of times because we have to or because we haven't hired anyone yet. There's no shame in that game, that's how it is. Over time though, maybe you make your first hire and your second hire. Your job at that point as the leader of your company, as a CEO, is to get good at delegating. One of my team members tells me that I'm the queen of delegation. I love to delegate. I love to gamify delegation, right? Every morning I make my to-do list and my question isn't, what am I gonna get done first? My question is, what do I need to delegate first? What do I need to get off this list? What do other people in my company do much better than I do? Because when you do that, right, then, and you get these things off your plate, your company starts to move forward faster. And then your job is to only do those things that are in your genius zone. What are those things that only you should be doing in, the, in your company? What are those things that, you, you know, move your company forward? And let me say this, for every CEO, it's a little bit different. Some CEOs are the integrators. They are more of the doers. They like working with team members. Other CEOs are the visionaries and they shouldn't be working with team members at all. So it's important for you to get clear on where your time is best spent. And just remember, if you're new and you're working all the time, you won't always be doing that. Soon you'll hire somebody and you'll start to delegate. Over time, you'll delegate more and more and step into that, that highest role for you in the company. That's the best use of your skill set. By the way, I would like to delegate subscribing to this channel to you. So if you would be so kind, definitely subscribe below. But anyway, on to number three. So when it comes to professionals and newbies, newbies tend to talk all the time during a sales conversation. Now again, some of you might be seasoned and you're saying like, I still do that. That's okay, we'll talk about that. Professionals are really good at listening during a sales conversation. And that's a skill that you develop over time. The truth is none of us are born knowing how to sell. We don't learn how to sell in elementary school or high school or even college, right? You could get an MBA and never have a course on sales. So how are we supposed to learn how to sell? Well, here's the secret in selling. First, get some training, read a book, get some training, learn from somebody. I love, um, 
I love Brian Tracy's book, The Psychology of Selling, Jeffrey Gittimer's The Sales Bible. I also wrote a book called Selling with Intention. If you haven't gotten that yet, I talk about how, a lot about how to listen in the conversation. The way to set up a successful sales conversation where you can do a lot of listening is to remember to create open-ended questions to ask your prospect, right? And these open-ended questions are focused on one of two things. They're either focused on the pain, like what are the struggles for your prospective client and or the goals? What are the goals that your prospective client has for themselves, right? Because when you ask those open-ended questions, then it's easy to discern where your client is now and where they wanna go and whether or not your product or service is the, the bridge in between that's going to get them there. If it is, then it's definitely your job to offer them a next step so that they can purchase your product or service. If it's not, that's okay. Then it's easy to say, you know what? Uh, it's not a good fit, but here's someone that I can refer you to, or here's a couple of people that I, I could recommend. That way you're completely serving the client at the highest level because you are giving them a next step. So just remember, newbies talk all the time, professionals listen well. You can quickly move from that newbie stage to professional simply by becoming a great listener and asking open-ended questions. And by the way, make sure to stick around to the end for my story on listening to experts. All right, next up, what's the difference between newbies and professionals? Well, newbies tend to hold on tight to their money because they don't believe more is coming. We've all been there, right? Share in the comments if you've been there. Professionals know that there's always more money coming and they plan accordingly. Again, in the beginning of your business, this is challenging, right? A lot of times we'll sell to just about anybody, right? If they want our product or service and we don't necessarily care if they're an ideal client because we need money to come in. And there's this, this kind of, the scare, there can be this scarcity belief that more money isn't coming, more money isn't coming. Once you've been in business for a while and you know and you're consistently marketing three ways. You know how to follow up, you know how to close sales. You develop this knowing, right? This knowing that more money is coming and so you're planning for that. When you think about this, the difference between uh, people who are successful and those who aren't, those who are successful, they've developed this habit and the skill of just knowing. Knowing and believing, right? That more is coming, that the next, that the next thing is on the way. It's like, it's like they know that they're a millionaire, right? They know that money flows to them every day. They know that they live in X house or drive X carts. It's, it's moves, it moves from a want and a desire to living in the knowing. So again, newbies might hold on tight to the money because they're not sure more is coming where professionals, professionals live in the belief that they're doing the right things, right? They're taking action and mar in marketing and sales and they know more money is coming. And finally, newbies can't believe how hard it is to be in business. We've all been there. Professionals, enjoy the challenges. And this is a fine line, right? Because in the beginning, it's like, it can feel so challenging. Like you didn't realize you were going to wear all the hats. So you had to do the marketing, you had to do the sales, you were doing the accounting, you were doing all the things in the beginning. And that is challenging. I always say the first six figures in business is the hardest six figures you'll ever make. But once you get past that, right? Once you get past that and you start to hire and you start to delegate, you start to enjoy your business more, right? Because you're typically then only doing the things that you enjoy. You're doing the genius work in your business. So then when challenges come up, it doesn't feel like such a big deal. One, because you've got the experience now, but two, you're not in the grind and the hustle every day. So doing the other parts of the business actually becomes a challenge that you can enjoy. Back in the day when I first started my business, I used to give away my power constantly to experts. And when I say experts, I mean experts in quotes, quotations, because I didn't necessarily know if they knew better than me. I just was, you know, the next expert would come along or I would read the next book. And I remember talking to one of my coaches who was an expert, but you know, it's different with coaching, right? Because coaches ask you challenging questions. Coaches give you the space, right? The container to make your own decisions. And this coach was really good at it. And this coach said, is it helping you to listen to all these different experts? And I said, clearly not, it's just giving me anxiety. And she's like, what would serve you better? And I, and I sat there for a minute in that question, it was like, what would serve me better? And the answer was trusting my gut, trusting my experience, trusting what I already knew. And so I stopped listening to all the outside noise and I started to lean in and really listen to to what I, what I knew in my heart or what I knew in my gut. For me, it's really a gut check. Like if an opportunity shows up in front of me for my company, it's like a gut check. And sometimes it's a 24 hour gut check. Like I have to sleep on it and then I check on it. And if it's a no, it's a no, 
right? Or if it's a sense of like, even though that worked for that company, it doesn't mean it's gonna work for mine and I know that, I listen to that. So over time, you get better and better at trusting your gut and the more you can do that, the easier being in business becomes. Up next, why do businesses fail to scale? And remember, your 2X is waiting for you too.